My name is Jake Weisenthal. I am the country director of an organization called Semilla Nueva based in Guatemala City, Guatemala. We have our operations on the southern coast of Guatemala. Um, our vision, our mission as an organization is to reduce malnutrition in Guatemala. It's currently the third most malnourished country in the world. And if you look at the caloric intake of most families across Guatemala, the key staple on every, every single table three times a day are corn tortillas. Um, what we do is we have been promoting corn varieties that have higher quality protein and higher levels of zinc in order to reduce malnutrition in Guatemala. I've been living in Guatemala for three and a half years now. I've been working with this organization for two years. Um, I originally came down two weeks after I graduated from college on a Princeton Latin America fellowship to work with an organization in the rural highlands of Guatemala. Um, for the first six months, I worked in domestic fundraising and pitching the organization to businesses in Guatemala City, and then I moved into monitoring and evaluation. I mean, I spent the next year working in monitoring evaluation for them, um, really got hooked on Guatemala, um, hooked on the issues that are relevant to the country, and discovered this new organization, Semilla Nueva, um, that was hiring for somebody to work in monitoring evaluation, and they offered me a job, and I moved to Guatemala City, and I've been with them ever since. I actually had no background whatsoever in m and um, So while I was working in domestic fundraising for the first six months, I realized that this wasn't what I wanted to do. This wasn't where I wanted to be. Um, and there was somebody else at the organization who had a job in monitoring and evaluation, and I wanted to work in her position. Um, so I started taking online courses um, at night to learn the basics of monitoring and evaluation. And then when she left the organization, I applied for the position. So what happened is I, I, I went into monitoring and evaluation, and over the first three months, I realized that there was enormous bias in data collection, um, and then also just human time, resource, energy waste. Um, because of paper collection and inputting data into Excel sheets. So I started researching Open Data Kit. I liked it a lot. I used it a few times. Um, the challenge um, was that it didn't have the form building ability, that I wanted something really simple and streamlined and clear, especially if I was going to be stepping away from the organization and somebody local in Guatemala were to be taking it on. Um, from that point, I explored Form Hub. Own a, um, a bunch of different tools, kind of looking for the best fit within the organization, and that's when I discovered Kobo. Kobo for me was was the natural extension of this project. Um, it was exactly what we needed in terms of its capacity and capability, but what differentiated it at this point was the ease of, of building forms um, in a way that the other tools at that time weren't really offering something so simple and clear. We had staff working across eight different projects across about 12 different communities in rural Guatemala. Every single project had its own set of data collection instruments, tools, and data that they would then push in to be analyzed. Many of those data sets were similar. Many of the tools that you had to run were similar. So it could be observations of students washing their hands. It could be surveys with families. It could be community diagnostics. We did a literacy test um, um, for students. So we originally piloted this project with our water sanitation and hygiene program, and then also with our school libraries program, with the core intent of immediately bringing on the programs that had some of the most complicated tools to manage on paper, and they would be easiest to manage um, through digital data. So it started out with two staff members, both local, running these. The success of their experience, and then also their ability to be interviewing and discussing with 40, 50 plus families in a span of a couple days and sending that data immediately back to us at the office made it something that we immediately wanted to scale to the rest of the organization and make relevant to the other projects that could also use this technology. One of the key challenges was um, this was a big change. Um, and this is often a big change for organizations that are adopting digital data collection technology. Um, there was initial resistance. Um, just it was something new and different. Um, just the thought or the idea that this could collapse, we could lose all of the data that we had been collecting over the past six months, whereas the paper can be stored hard copy in a box. So that was kind of the first hur hurdle to overcome. Um, then another key facet was the majority of the people I worked with. So I was working in a small village called Santiago Atitlan, up in the rural highlands of Guatemala. The predominant language in this community is Sutujil. So even walking along the street, 90% of the time what you're going to hear is Sutujil interspersed with Spanish. Um, very few people have smartphones and are, you know, technologically capable in that sense. Um, so one of the challenges that I ran into was how we were going to buy smartphones and teach people to use this technology on their phones to collect data when they were so used to doing it with paper and kind of like the technological precedents weren't there at the outset. Um, that being said, it 
caught on unbelievably quickly. So the majority of the staff who used it, and this is staff that had never used a smartphone before, that had never used this type of technology before, latched on immediately because they could just upload the form directly from their phone into the computer and they never had to worry about the data collection, they never had to worry about losing the paper, about it getting wet, about it falling off the motorcycle. Um, there were a lot of advantages immediately for them and that it surprised me actually how quickly um, it, it grew within the organization as kind of like this positive source of reinforcement. I think my favorite moment in, in all of this was I left the organization after it had been more or less institutionalized within these two different projects. Um, I trained somebody, um, a local staff member named Misael, to take on monitoring and evaluation once I left. And Kobo was one of the core parts of his training program when he was coming on. Um, he was born and raised in Santiago where we lived and his first language was Sutuhil. So I think my favorite moment in this entire process was watching Misael training a variety of local staff members in Sutuhil on Kobo Toolbox. Um, it was something that for me was inspiring um, and then it was inspiring for me to have seen this work and see this catch on and, and lock within the organization. But beyond that, to see the applicability of Kobo in a context like this, something that, you know, it is this digital data collection technology that's so much more useful and streamlined than paper, but it's so much more accessible and it's manageable even on this level of people who have never used this technology before. I moved on to another organization called Semilla Nueva in Guatemala City. I've been living in Guatemala City and working with Semilla Nueva for the past year and a half. And within the first three to six months, we had to run a community survey um, with about 200 farmers, about an hour and a half long survey, two hour long survey, 150, 200 questions um, all along the southern coast of the country. And we were running this by five field technicians who were born and raised in the communities. All of our field technicians that we hired to do agricultural extension and outreach, born and raised in the communities. Um, they're farmers, it gives them a lot of weight and credibility wherever they go and give presentations on the technologies that we try and push. One of them had, had been to college briefly, the rest of them fluctuate between, you know, fifth grade, sixth grade educations, um, had never used smartphones before. These guys were going to be the ones doing these surveys with farmers across the coast. We did it once in 2015 before I came on with paper, and it was just piles and piles and piles of these long surveys that then had to be inputted by a fellow into Excel. It was tedious work and it took us about four months to do it just based on the volume of work and availability of people to do this data input. So I suggested when I came on that we should do it with Kobo. Um, designed the entire survey, um, trained the technicians on it in a three-day session at our, our field offices out on the southern coast and then they ran it and it was a huge success. Um, we managed to collect about 200 responses from farmers who didn't lose any of the surveys. The technicians were enthralled with this. It was so much easier for them than carrying around those big reams of paper. From that point onwards, we were looking actively for opportunities as an organization to apply Kobo in other contexts. And the best opportunity came up, actually, um, in a partnership with something called the ICTA, which is the Guatemalan um, Institute for Science and Technology and Agriculture. Um, and their responsibility is to be the forefront of science and technological innovation in agriculture across Guatemala. They're a government institution. Um, we've been partnering with them for a while, and they're part of our, our big push to get biofortified crops, these high nutrient crops, into the hands of as many farmers and families as possible across Guatemala. So with them, um, we liberated a corn seed at the beginning of 2016 that reached um, about 27,000 people across Guatemala. Um, so reaching all of these families is great, but you also want to know about the performance of the crop once it actually gets to these families and whether or not it's something that's agronomically and then also culturally acceptable for these families. So I suggested to the government that we had a really, really innovative tool to run surveys that can capture a lot of data and they're easy to use. I mean, it was Kobo. And so I held the first initial training with the government representatives. They loved it. I held another training afterwards. Um, they bought onto using Kobo. They designed the entire survey in Kobo. It's about a two hour survey and then ran an entire training with all the technicians of the government branch out in our field offices on the southern coast. Um, and that was the point for me where I saw Kobo really genuinely catching on in this context. Um, from that point, we are now on the second run of surveys. We ran the first one to collect our baseline. We are now collecting um, an agronomic midline 
um, to see how these, how these performed. And then in the future, we're probably going to be looking at acceptability, also using Kobo. And we now have a staff member who is spending big, big chunks of her time um, developing Kobo surveys, training people on Kobo surveys, doing analysis based on Kobo data. Um, and it's been a huge success for us as an organization.